Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation. We have e to the power negative z, which is the opposite of z, equals negative e to the power z, which is the opposite of e to the power z. Now, how do you solve such an equation, right? The bases are equal, but there's a minus sign. So if you put everything on the same side, can we do something like factor or something like that? Anyways, before we get into the solution, I want to show you a graph of these two functions and where they intersect. Here's a graph of these two functions that I made with Wolfram Alpha. And unfortunately, they do not intersect uh, for obvious reasons, right? So what does that mean? It means there are no real solutions. Wait a minute, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Yes, it is, but I still wanted to show you the graph. And we're going to look at this graph one more time towards the end. And also a result from Wolfram Alpha. Let's go ahead and get to work. Now, we have this interesting equation, and I will be presenting two methods. Actually, maybe three methods. How about that? And for fun, let's start with the second method. All right, this time, because we haven't started with the second method for a while. So for my second method, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by e to the power z, okay? Because that's, uh, there's a good reason. e to the power negative z and e to the power z are reciprocals. If I multiply by that, I'm going to get 1 on one side. So when you multiply e to the z, e to the negative z, and then negative e to the z times e to the z, you're going to be getting e to the 0 on the left, which is 1. And on the right, you're going to get negative e to the power 2z. 2z or not 2z. That's the problem, right? Now, obviously, we can multiply both sides by e to the z because e to the z cannot be 0, right? So this would be okay. Now, what is that supposed to mean? We, we got a negative in front of the e to the 2z. And that is equal to a number. Let's go ahead and get rid of that negative. Multiply both sides by negative 1, or some people would divide. Same thing. So, and switch sides, and we get e to the power 2z, or not 2z again, equals negative 1. Now, here's the nice thing about it. Whenever you have e to the power something, you can basically turn the other side to e to the power something. In other words, um, complexify it, and then this way you're going to be you're going to be able to solve for z. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write the negative 1 as e to the power 2n minus 1 times pi i. Because if you think about where negative 1 is located on the complex plane, it is going to make an angle of pi radians, and its distance from 0 is going to be 1 unit. Okay. So we can go ahead and from here write the 2z is equal to 2n minus 1 times pi i. And finally, multiplying both sides by 1 half or dividing by 2, we're going to get z equals, I'm going to go ahead and div uh, divide everything inside the parentheses by 2n minus 1 half times pi i. All right, great. So in other words, z is going to be a multiple of i, which means it's going to be on the imaginary axis. Unless n equals 1 half. But n is an integer, by the way, so it can't be 1 half. So z can't be 0, right, obviously. Because if z is 0, you get 1 equals negative 1, which doesn't work most of the time. So let's go ahead and take a look at some particular values, such as if n is equal to 0, then we're going to get z equals negative pi i over 2. So if you think about this number, make a negative pi over 2 uh, radian angle, and then you'll get it. Or if n is equal to 1, we're going to get z equals pi i over 2. So all of these are going to be solutions. Let's just pick one of these and test. For example, if z is equal to that, e to the power negative z is going to be negative pi i over 2, which is negative i. And negative i is the opposite of i, which is e to the power pi i over 2. So it satisfies the original equation. Of course, the others are going to satisfy it too. All right? So let's continue with the first method because, remember, we started with the second method, right? So the, for the first method, I'm going to kind of uh, write this uh, in a different way. So what can I do with this? 
I can go ahead and I think write it as negative e to the z equals e to the negative z or e to the z equals negative e to the negative z. Now here's what I'm going to do. I will replace negative with negative 1 and write e to the z as negative 1 times e to the power negative z and then replace negative 1 with just like before e to the power 2n minus 1 pi i times e to the power negative z. So the exponents will be subtracted and from here we're going to get z equals 2n minus 1 pi i minus z put the z on the other side and you'll get the exact same thing. So these methods are very similar pretty much the same thing but uh, just done a little differently. Okay? Anyways, uh, this is kind of like a, an expression that is way too negative so let's go ahead and introduce the third method because you know the first method and second method are very very similar so let's go ahead and come up with a third method and third method is going to be different okay so we have e to the negative z equals negative e to the z let's go ahead and add e to the z to both sides remember with our first method we kind of multiply both sides by e to the z so sec first method we didn't multiply we just wrote negative one as something else that was very similar but this time we're going to add when we add e to the z and e to the negative z, we're getting a zero. Does that look familiar? Well, sort of. Let's go ahead and replace z with something meaningful. Now remember, uh, using Euler's formula, we can actually write a complex number such as e to the i theta as cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is an awesome formula. It's super duper awesome. This is just simply amazing, right? But we have e to the z. Guess what? We can replace z with i theta. How do I know that's going to work? I don't. I'm just going to test it out, right? You could also do the following. You could replace z with uh, something like, I don't know, a plus bi maybe. You could try that and see if, where that's going to get. We could also test it out. Anyways, let's do this first. So this is going to give me e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta equals 0. As you know from this formula, if you replace theta with negative theta, cosine is even, sine is odd. So cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine theta, but sine of negative theta is unfortunately negative sine of theta because sine is odd, weird, whatever you want to call that. Anyways, so now this is going to give us the following, cosine theta plus i sine theta. And the second one, this one, is going to give us cosine theta again because the negative theta disappears under cosine, but the sine needs to be negated. And this is the equation we get. And this is actually really cool because if you go ahead and simplify this, you end up with 2 cosine theta equals 0, which means cosine theta equals 0. And what's that supposed to mean? It means theta can be written as pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or any odd multiple of pi over 2. Is that equivalent to what we found earlier? Yes, you can definitely check it out. Now, would this method work if uh, we did a little different? Like, for example, what would happen? That's, I think that's worth exploring. What would happen if we replace z with a plus b? And if you want, you can call this fourth method, even though I wasn't planning on doing it. Now, replace z with a plus b i, and then e to the power negative a minus b i equals zero. This is going to give you e to the a times e to the b i plus e to the negative a times e to the negative bi. And then you could probably separate this like factor out an e to the a and do something with this. Notice that this sum is going to come up somehow and you can kind of use trigonometric approaches again. Anyways, this is a different story. Let me just share with you what Wolfram Alpha gave us and the graph one more time. Notice they're not going to intersect. No real solutions. Too bad. This is a plus bi. So everything is complex. And this is what we get from Wolfram Alpha, which kind of looks a little different, but guess what? It's the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.